Let's go blue. Does anyone see my cape around here anywhere? Mary McKnight here with Service Dog Academy and Diabetic Alert Dog University. It is Medical Alert Dog Monday where I answer your questions about training and purchasing medical alert dogs. Uh, as you know, each week we start out with a socialization item. This week's socialization item is instruments. <laughs> of all sorts and kinds. What you may not know is that dogs can sometimes be pretty afraid of instruments because they make a lot of noise and they are attached to the humans. So that can be pretty scary for, for a vast majority of dogs. In fact, actually I play trumpet. I don't know if you know that or not, but um, uh, every once in a while I'll pick up my trumpet. I would say I've probably played it eight times in the last year or so. And uh, today, Poor Luke got afraid of it. Um, he's only seen it a couple times, you know, in his training process, and he was like, what in the world is this thing again? So, you know, it's really important to not only just introduce your dog once to instruments, but introduce your dog multiple times to instruments. Our question of the week comes from Solstice from Bellingham, Washington. She writes, my name is Solstice. I'm a type one diabetic who also gets severe migraines that land me in the hospital at least once a month. I got a German Shepherd puppy who is about three weeks old now. I will be able to take him home in eight weeks. I am looking at your training program and wondering more about it. Is it possible to train the dog not only to be a type one diabetic alert dog, but also a migraine alert dog as a secondary alert? How often do you run the program in Seattle? I am located in Bellingham and have no problem driving down for classes. Thank you so much, Solstice. You know, this is a great question, Solstice. About 25% of the people who contact me uh, actually have multiple medical conditions that they would like their dog to alert to. So this is a good question. I haven't really answered anything like this before. So as you know, most people with diabetes, they don't just have diabetes. They frequently have multiple, maybe autoimmune conditions. So this is a really good question. I'm glad that you asked it. So I've helped to train over 100 medical alert dogs with the vast majority of them being diabetic alert dogs. And if you think about it, diabetic alert dogs are actually required to perform multiple types of alert. The first one is for high blood sugar and the second one is for low blood sugar. So actually in a diabetic alert dog, you are actually alerting to two different medical conditions. When I used to teach my eight week class, I used to call it Diabetic Alert Dog 101 and just teach low blood sugar in it. But what started to happen is about week five to week six, I started to get people who were starting to get interested in high blood sugar. And I actually was thinking that I'd be able to have a second level class teaching high blood sugar. But what happened is in the eight week class, people were like, well, Mary, don't we just apply what we learned to low blood sugar to high blood sugar? And I'm like, oh man, you figured that out? <laughs> Uh, and although it was kind of a bad business decision, it actually makes me uh, a bit you know, happy that I was able to teach my students enough to you know, arm them with enough knowledge that they are able to go out in the world and conquer any type of training problem that they're having. So I'm you know, kind of sad that I didn't get to teach the Diabetic Alert Dog 201 class, but you know, at 100 students in, you know, our students are figuring this stuff out with the fundamental training methodologies that I'm teaching in my classes. So what I found out also in my Medical Alert Dog classes is that over half the dogs started picking up on high blood sugars without any additional training or for the high blood sugars. And uh, I also have 10 students who have had their dogs not only pick up on low blood sugars and high blood sugars, but their dogs have picked up on multiple medical conditions, including Charlie horses, which kind of blew me out of the water when I heard that, AFib episodes, so atrial fibrillation episodes, and then uh, like you, migraines as well. So, uh, you know, it is possible for your dog to alert to multiple medical conditions. The reason why I actually started training for migraine alert is because in about 2010, I had actually had, you know, um, I think a handful of diabetic alert dog students at that point. And uh, one day I was sitting there at home and the, my dog came up to me and alerted me to a migraine. And I was like, what in the world? How did he know about this? And it turns out, yeah, dogs can alert to migraines. Uh, and 
But what that experience allowed me to do is go, okay, so the dogs can alert to diabetes and they can alert to migraine. What else can they do? And so I experimented with narcolepsy alert in 2010 and we created the world's first narcolepsy alert dog in 2010. I'm really excited about that. So yes, dogs can alert to multiple medical conditions. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, why are these dogs spontaneously picking up on other medical conditions? Uh, what I think is personally happening is that these dogs are understanding the difference between normal scent and abnormal scent. Now I can't tell you that's truth, um, you know, using scientific terms or not, because no one's really studied this stuff yet, but I really think it is the difference between normal and abnormal. And uh, now I'm not guaranteeing that your dog is going to be able to spontaneously alert to migraines for you, but I know that we can definitely help you speed up that alert training using the methods that I teach in my intensive four day class here in Seattle or in Iowa or wherever it is that you, I am in your area, the dog can be taught to do multiple medical alerts. This is an excellent question, Solstice. What do you think of my answer? Uh, if you were to come to one of my medical alert dog classes, what other condition would you want your dog to alert to? If you like this video, please like it on your Facebook page, share it with your friends, share it on YouTube. And also if you could leave a comment right below this video, I'd really much appreciate it. You know, the more comments I get, the more feedback I get, the better I can address your concerns through these videos. If you have a question about training a medical alert dog or purchasing a medical alert dog, please email me at questions at servicedogacademy.com and I will try to answer them in our next week's YouTube video. Please also include your location so I can include that information in uh, the next video. You're in luck. I've actually added another medical alert dog class here in Seattle in April because the last one for March filled up pretty quickly. So uh, we actually have two in April now. There's one here in Seattle and there's one in Iowa. The one in Iowa only has a couple spots left in it. So if you want to register for that, get on calling me at 206-355-9033 really quickly uh, and we'll try and get you registered for that class as soon as possible. If you're like many of my international students and cannot physically come to the States to do training, there are two options available for you. You can do individual one-on-one -on -one Skype a training with me, or you can go through the online Diabetic Alert Dog University program at diabeticalertduguniversity.com. So, and then you can also do a hybrid of the two. You can use the videos and then you can ask questions using Skype. So you do not have to physically come to me to actually do the training. However, you know, it's nice to have that one-on-one -on -one attention that you get in the class because I get to give you immediate feedback while you're doing something. And you also get to watch the other students, which is a nice benefit of the class. I just want to remind you that you can train your own medical alert dog. All it really takes is a dog with the right temperament, time, patience, and working with the right trainer. I'll see you next week. Has anyone seen my cape around here anywhere? Have you seen it, Liam? <sighs> Thank you.